So I'm going to talk about storytelling. And storytelling is very important to me. Um, I used to work as a marketeer for Samsung, and it was, it resonated with me that Samsung is actually a very bad storytelling company. <laughs> because there's another company based somewhere in Silicon Valley, which is extremely good at storytelling. And they get a lot more money for their phones than we did. And so that was the beginning of my story, the beginning of my own personal story about like, okay, so why is it that this guy can just put on a turtleneck and double the prices of his phones? Because that's pretty much what he did. Um, so that's where it began for me. Now, I'm gonna, oh, I'm just gonna, what I'm gonna ask everybody to do is take an imaginary 3M poster, post it out of their pocket. So please take an imaginary post it out of your pocket, and an imaginary pencil. I'm going to show you a video. It has no sound. And what I'd like you to do after you watch the video is with your imaginary poster and with your imaginary pencil, just write down very quickly what is happening in this video. Okay. There's absolutely no wrong answer. It's a very old video. It's from 1944. So without further ado, go for it. What's happening here? Okay, good. So please, 10 seconds, just what's happening in that video for you? Just write down, I'm not going to ask you to share, I just want you to spend 10 seconds getting clear in your mind what happened in that video for you. All right, I'll give you just one more second. Okay, so you're clear in your mind what you were seeing. But what were you actually seeing? Can I tell you what you were actually seeing? You were seeing two triangles, one circle, and six sticks move on a white screen. Ladies and gentlemen, that's all you saw. Everything else was you. And this piece of evidence is very, very old, it's from 1944. And it was the beginning of an investigation of humans as storytelling machines. It's from two scientists called Haider and Simmel. And the study is about the perception of, of inanimate objects. They showed this same, it wasn't a video back then, it was a film, to three groups of 34 people. With the remarkable 98.2% consistency, everybody who watched it did the same thing that you did. They imposed a story upon person, upon objects with no personality. They imposed a story where no story existed. And this has led us to an interesting conclusion that you and I are story machines. And this is what I'd like to talk about today. You and I are story machines. Every person you ever talk to is a story machine. 
why is this important and how did it happen? And then at the end, I'm going to give you a little story pattern to help you change your life. So, how did we become story machines? Very, very simply, it began a hell of a long time ago. Stories were invented, best case scenario, 40,000 years ago. For 80% of human history, we have been sharing stories as our number one language tool. To put this into perspective, if stories were invented at 12 a.m., writing was invented at 9 p.m. The wheel was invented a little bit after that. We are story machines. Now, this has meant that over the millennia, over 40,000 years, something really interesting has happened to our brain. This is, so far we know, the earliest story. The earliest stories were about communicating knowledge. Over these 40,000 years, something really interesting has happened. Our brains have turned stories from being software to hardware. What we see now is that stories spark activity all over our brain. And really interesting, it's not one particular part of the brain. It's in fact every single layer of the brain from the most neo of the neocortex to the most reptilian parts at the back. Every single part of the brain, or every single major part of the brain, is sparked, whether you're speaking or whether you're listening to a story. It just doesn't matter. Stories are part of your innate humanness. There is no society in the world without stories at its center. There are societies without wheels, there are societies without writing systems, but there are no societies without stories. The omnipresentness of stories is quite overwhelming when you think about it. So, why did humans develop as story machines? Good question. Well, originally, we can assume that the major purpose of stories was simply to communicate knowledge. This is where the wildebeest are tomorrow, we're going to go over there, did what we do today, and we're going to go kill some wildebeest. These fruits are very, very bad. I ate one yesterday, I've got a stomach upset, I'm not going to eat them again. But three things happened at the same time, or three things evolved at the same time. Human societies got more complex, human brains got more complex, and as those two things happened, our stories became more complex. And we now can use stories to do all this heavy lifting. And it's really fascinating that stories have become the Swiss army knife of our brain. They can do all these things and more all at the same time, which is just phenomenal. So what? Why should you care? You should care because if you ever have to convince anybody else to do something, you should remember that what they want is to hear a story. If you want to sell a hot dog, you should be using stories to sell your hot dog. If you want a job, you should be using stories to help you get that job. Now, Fundamentally, because this is true, the most human way to talk to anybody else is through a story. If you give somebody data, most of the time they'll tell you, what does this mean? And you have to explain that through a story. But how? All right. So, since 1944, since Hyder and Simmel, we have brought and we have built something called a science of storytelling. And this science of storytelling has been built by a whole bunch of people across the world. Um, these are some of the 
biggest names in the science of storytelling in 2024. I'm very lucky that a couple of them are good friends. Um, they're from all parts of the world. And these academics and business people have begun to really construct ways to teach people stories. And we're doing this, uh, we do this in Korea. Um, these are just three of my workshops that I've done in Korea. Um, obviously very enjoyable, my lifestyle. I get to do workshops in really nice places. All of this is just helping people understand how to tell stories better. And the important thing about storytelling, the important thing about learning storytelling is not really learning the stories themselves, but learning patterns, story patterns. And what I'd like to do in finishing up tonight is just share one very simple but really powerful, trust me on this, really powerful story pattern. It's the story pattern which every entrepreneur must learn. It's the story pattern which justifies your existence. It's the why we are here story pattern. Very simple. It has four parts. It begins with, in the past, this was the situation. The second part is, but then there was a complication. The complication produced a question. And what do we need if we have a question? We need an answer. All right. So I'd like to go through how this operates for one company and one result. So the company I've chosen is Coupon. The reason I chose Coupon is because it's such a clear example of this why we're here problem or why we're here story. So in 2012, Korea had a really awful delivery system. It had several market players. All these people were in the markets, but they all shared a lot of problems. None of them owned their delivery systems. None of them owned their logistics. They were famous for poor deliveries. They were famous for just stuffing up your life. You got these little stickers stuck on your door that said, please come and pick up your package. It's like, serious, W2F, what, why, why, do, why do I have to go pick up the package? You know, you're a delivery company. Anyway, so this was the situation and it was really, really bad. And Kim Bong Sok, the CEO and founder of Coupon, he saw this and he asked a very powerful question. How can we make delivery frictionless? What do we need to do to make every single person in Korea's life more comfortable through delivery? His answer was the obvious one, which you and I, we all use every day, was rocket. The rocket solution has five key parts. And if I can remember the, all five of these, I'll be very happy. So number one, the first thing that Kim Bong Sok did was he bought, he bought out everybody. <laughs> he bought his own warehouses. He bought his own trucks. He bought everything. Everything has a coupon brand. The second thing he did was he, this one, he went mobile first. He made coupon robot delivery mobile first. Then, because we all know that Korea has two peaks, right? There's the Solonara peak, and then there's the Chuseok peak. These two peaks represent about 40% of Coupang's business. So that's two weeks of the year. The rest of the, rest of the year is quite flat. So he needed cloud computing. He couldn't really rely on normal computing. The third thing was that, um, oh, AI and big data. He used all of these technologies together. So the situation 
was that in 2012, the Korean delivery system was complicated, inefficient, and not and not not um, not delivering what we wanted. He came along, asked the question, and then he came up with this answer. The result was that he was able to do the largest IPO ever in Korean history. The company is now valued at more than $100 billion. It's less than 20 years old. And it's just dominated the market and excluded everybody else. This very simple example is how we can build a narrative, this why we're here story. The why we're here story, very simple. In the past, what was the situation? What was the complication that forced you to take action? Because of this complication, what was the question you asked yourself? And then finally, what was the solution you delivered? Honestly, every single time you go to an investor, if you begin with that story, you won't suck. You will actually be pretty damn good. Okay? Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you very much.